or Spokane tribe of Indians have lived and cared for these grounds, identifying themselves as flesh of the earth. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and we show gratitude to the land, river, and peoples who have been fishing, hunting, harvesting, and gathering here for generations. May we learn from one another's stories so that we may nurture the relationship with the people of the Spokane tribe and to all those who share this land. All right, any proposed changes to the agenda? All right, we'll consider the agenda adopted. And the first action item is approval of the August 2022 board minutes. Hello. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All right, motion passes. And next we have the approval of the August 2022 bills and contributions. Um, I move that we approve the August 2022 bills and contributions. $1,873,000 to 2017 and all right, it's been good second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion passes. And next we have the financial report. And since Nicole is tied up, Penny is going to take us through that. All right, thank you. Uh, so August closed with uh, 168 days of operating cash. That's equal to $5.9 million and is net of encumbrances um, and does not include our reserve for capital in the amount of $639,000. Expenditures in August were $825,000. The vast majority of that, $559,000, was personnel costs, followed by um, the typical utility costs, um, uh, computer, books and materials, et cetera. As far as the business office news, the budget uh, stays in the forefront and uh, the meetings are now being scheduled with the mayor's office. So, uh, any questions on operations? Thank you. Okay, so uh, next up is the bond update. And I'll lead off with a look at our current spending trend. We closed August with $11 million of cash and investments. And we've kind of settled into an average spending uh, expenditures of about a million a month. That's covering phase two. Also, um, still the, the work that we've got going on in the phase one branches. Won't be long, we'll be talking about 24 seven kiosk installations. Um, the fixed asset uploads, you know that um, in August we were preparing the July uploads. That had the central branch opening. Um, it, it literally took us the full month of August. We wound up breaking that up into three very large <clears throat> files. Um, one that would bring all the assets that we purchased since 2019, such as artwork, furniture, the building, studio equipment, video lab equipment. And then we did a separate load for technology and another one for AMH. So we hope that when we get um, the capability to print reports from the asset system that it will help us with our quality control checks. Um, we're continuing to focus on furniture, back orders, um, punch lists. Um, Hill has been a great support to us. Dean Gable, especially, I want to call him out. Um, it's a big job. And as of actually this week, we've now got all of our phase two furniture orders um, into the vendors. And lastly, there were no contracts executed under the special signing authority. So any questions on the bond? I'm wondering what AMH stands for. I'm sorry, one more time. What does AMH stand for? Oh, automatic material handling. So that's our MK solutions um, equipment. Any Thank you. Next, we have our bond construction project update. Good afternoon. Um, we are uh, well underway. Uh, let's see, we're, we've got a few outstanding items. We're just closing out the contracts for Hive and Liberty. 
um, Central, as Penny said, opened in July, and there are some outstanding items we're working on, as well as closeout activities, turning over extra stock, uh, o and manuals, that kind of thing. So we're continuing to work on that and, and uh, tweaking things that uh, the library has uh, noticed as they're occupying it. And then for phase two, we are um, basically um, on the downhill side of both South Hill and um, Indian Trail. Um, they are working on their finishes. Um, we've, uh, at South Hill, they turned over the electrical room um, uh, two weeks ago to uh, SPL and they have installed the internet. And I actually ran a meeting on library internet at South Hill this morning. So that was fun. And um, I should be able to do that in two weeks at Indian Trail. So um, there's, you know, paint on the walls and, and tack boards and that kind of stuff. But uh, we've got a few more things that we're working on, but uh, should be uh, finishing both those jobs by the end of this year. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question. What is a, what is a chiller yard? What is, um, the chiller yeah. yard is a, uh, an outside enclosure that um, we are getting a new chiller. It provides the air conditioning and it is a long lead item, so it's not coming till December, but uh, the chiller yard, we're having to make it a little bigger and we're putting new doors on it for better access to the new chiller and we're putting more insulation in it uh, to make sure our sound uh, deadening for the neighbors. So we're doing quite a lot of work to the chiller yard as well as installing a brand new chiller. And that chiller yard is on the west side of South Hill. Anything right. else? I don't think so. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. That is something we've had to replace that in the past. It's been some noise. The chiller yard. Are we getting a new chiller? New chiller. That a new enclosure with some sound wired. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, we have the chairman's report, and there is no chairman's report. So we'll move on to the library executive director report. All right, thank you, Laura. Uh, report has also been submitted as part of the packet. A couple of highlights uh, we are recruiting for upcoming openings on uh, trustees. We stay on past the second term, so we're looking to replace that now that we are out of the environment. Casey uh, is also uh, asked to step down. So uh, we are filling those positions and then right around the corner, Nathan second term expires as well. So uh, lots of opportunity for the community. Uh, we've been doing social media posts, um, have uh, displays up uh, on our screens at the branches. We've gotten about 10 applications so far. Uh, I think we just went out in the newsletter. Uh, so I anticipate getting more applications that we have to us. As far as programming goes, uh, band book is this week. Yesterday, we had a program with the uh, Chris Archer talking about his experience around uh, having his books challenge. Uh, we've also <coughs> holding the program with Dr. Melissa Bedford, and she's going to talk about uh, the history of the band book movement, current trends, and uh, the uh, interactive reading activity afterwards. On October 6th, we've invited Kimber Glidden, who's the former director of Boundary County, who made significant threats uh, in the community uh, to ban certain materials uh, as part of their library system. So she would come over and talk about that experience. I don't know. Well, uh, the Hispanic Book Weeks, uh, we're also celebrating uh, Hispanic and Latinx heritage month. So there's uh, 
reading lists like we do uh, for other months uh, for books, films, and resources available. We did something a little bit different in August as far as our diversity and equity training that worked out really well. And actually, the next one is tomorrow. We're going to be replicating this. Uh, we were having some issues getting uh, frontline staff to participate in the training. So, our administrative staff covered desk uh, in order to remove that barrier. And I think that. Uh, all that reported that 60% of the public service that and that's one of the types of great participation for them. If you are noticing a little slowness around our collections, our main vendor, uh, Baker and Taylor, is a victim of ransomware. So we're having we've had some issues over the past month in getting orders completed and uh, getting that those materials delivered. So Looks like they're coming out of that now, so we should see those uh, items pick up again. Our star of the month went to uh, Andy Rubsy, who we call the presented here in July on the music program. Uh, he has just put so much work into those studio spaces and making sure that the equipment's right and that the public can access it in a good way. Uh, and constantly, constantly getting interrupted because everyone wants to see what the studio spaces uh, look like. So he just really stepped up over the past year, really, and, and we can't thank him enough because this is going to continue to be a really big resource for the public. So congrats to, to Dan. Um, also, just so you're aware, I've been doing uh, office hours at the branches to kind of try to increase accessibility for staff. Um, Folks have been trickling in, asking questions, just saying hi, talking. So I'm going to continue to do that to sort of uh, bridge uh, you know, that, especially at the neighborhood branches. Uh, and we're also happy to announce some new staff members. Uh, local author Sharma Shields will be joining us at our new writing education specialist. She's going to start in October. Um, so that's a, a big win for us in the community. Uh, should be able to really foster the connection that we have with the local writing scene. Uh, we also have some new pages of Judy and Robin joining us, uh, one at the Blue Park and uh, Judy at the Blue Park and Robin at Central. And we also have a new uh, custodian, Actio, who's joined us uh, just in the past week or so. As Penny said, we will be meeting with the mayor's office tomorrow to go over our budget proposal. Um, so we will that process. Any questions for me? Just uh, um, is the right education special judge at a ball? It is. Yeah. Yep. And how far behind are we with the paper and Taylor and how much? You know, I recall it being about two weeks or so that they were working on that. So it looks like maybe two to three weeks. And the Boundary County Librarian event is that a public event or a staff event? It's a public event. So our community uh, mission specialist, Shane. It's so an event that received national attention. Um, it's been on uh, radio, national radio, it's been covered by the uh, library professional. So it's a big deal, uh, an unfortunate event. Where, where is it going to be? I believe it's central. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is council liaison report. Congressman Beagle, Councilmember Beagle. Don't see him. All right. Then uh, we have the communications report. Hey. Hi. So uh, after all the exciting coverage that um, 
and news that Alina has reported on for the last two months at the board meetings. This month's report's a little more subdued. Um, the Spokane is Reading Committee, of which I am a part of, um, and that's SCLD, FPL, and Anti Bookstore, has announced that um, Kate Debo's Book of Difficult Fruit will be the Spokane is Reading selection for this year. And that was very fortuitous timing because we announced it just before she won the Washington State Book Award for 2022. So we're really excited to have her this year, and that event is in October, on October 25th. Uh, and as Andrew mentioned, we're also actively recruiting using our social media channels, our newsletter, and our blog for the Board of Trustees positions. Um, he mentioned that it went out in the newsletter, and we actually got 84 clicks on that story in the newsletter. So it's so exciting to see, and you can see that real data. And there is a post about that on LinkedIn, if anybody wants to share it with their LinkedIn networks, that's available for you to do. Uh, in email newsletter news, um, we've also been sending anniversary emails uh, commemorating the one year anniversary of our openings of both the Hive and Hilliard. Um, and not only do these celebrate this occasion that we've been open a year, but they're also an opportunity to market, you know, remarket the services that we have at those locations. And um, after sending the Hive anniversary email, our attendance at the monthly open house. Um, of the artists uh, increased 280%, which is a very fancy way of saying we went from five to 19. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the marketing team um, has also been selected to present two different presentations at this year's library marketing conference, um, which is in Indianapolis. I attended this conference twice prior to the pandemic, and it's a really great conference um, where you can meet with other library marketing professionals, and it's just a really cool opportunity to meet with people who do your exact same job all over the country. And um, I'll be presenting on building your own, uh, talking about our experience in building our own uh, website in-house. Um, and Skylar and Alina will be presenting with West Vancouver Public Library about um, leveraging your email list to reach your customers rather than re relying on the algorithm of so social media. So we're looking forward to that. That's in November. Um, speaking of al algorithms, you'll see our social media stats um, are substantially lower than they were last month. And that's that's purely because last month was a huge month for us. We got some of our highest engagement ever um, on all of our central posts. And so now we're just kind of back to business as usual. So it's not that our posts are doing bad, just comparatively to last month, they're not as good. Um, and one exciting thing I can tell you about our um, social media that's not reflected in the metrics is how great our library, our new library card designs have been doing. They are creating excellent word of mouth marketing for us because they're so colorful and eye-catching and fun that when you get one, people are getting them, they're taking photos of them and posting them on their social media. So we're meeting, you know, reaching whole new audiences that we are, that are already following us and that's resulting in more sign up. Um, likewise, with the uh, decrease in engagement we saw in our social media, because that's what was an open, we also didn't have any earned media um, because we didn't Sure, <laughs> <laughs> and that is my report. Any questions? Nope. All right, now moving on to new business, we have customer So uh, this is a, a minor change that we're asking the board to adopt to the customer report. Mainly lies uh, in number two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bullet point, bullet point, bullet point down, um, taking out the specific uh, behaviors of personal grooming um, and just leaving it as using restroom for unintended purposes. Uh, it makes it a little bit more general, and this allows the staff to use their judgment uh, in determining what an inappropriate value can always be. Um, the intention of this line of the policy was meant to prevent customers from leaving a mess or preventing others from accessing the restrooms. So instead of having language that seemingly points out to possibly a specific population, we want to address the impact instead. 
So staff uh, and security would enforce this line by asking themselves, is it creating a mess uh, in the facility? And is it inhibiting others from using the space? So we think that this is a more uh, real world uh, application of what acceptable factor behavior would be. Um, for example, you know, you know, they're brushing lunch, um, they're not making a mess. Does it really matter? Um, and we had an unintended consequence at one point where uh, we had people that were changing their clothes to shade at the shader shade bathrooms after the pool locker room was closed. So by definition, that needs to be allowed in the policy. However, it shouldn't be allowed. And it allows the staff to absorb these questions. So you know, especially after all of the DEI training that we've been doing, and we just kind of focus and look at this policy in a different way that focuses more on that the outcome and behavior um, rather than when you're asking for the board to adopt this. I, I, with the risk of opening a ton of can of worms, I just wanted to, when I read through the policy, I read the whole thing, I wondered if this reference at the top, library staff and the Spokane police officers will intervene. Like, this library staff, does that include our security staff? Like, Within that terminology, I just wanted to make sure that it seemed like they were left off the list with us. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of a more general, it's, you know, even at Hillier, we don't have security officer or like sure. school, so it's more of a general case. People there authorized to go back. But no, there's good point. Any other questions for Andrew? Is one intended the right word? Like, here's one. Like, I mean, just thinking about it. The way it was described was that really it's the zone of it's very it's a difficult topic to think about, talk about, right? But it's, it's not unintended, really. It's, it's a manner in which it creates, I would say, something unsafe or, or something that affects another's ability to use the right? That, that realistically is the, the conduct which we are seeking to have policy about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At first, very intentionally uses the restroom. Right, not unintentionally does this. Right, no, so, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right, and so um, <clears throat> I think some thought should be given to really the issue was we're trying to create an inclusive place mm -hmm. where people could use the restrooms. But what we want to make sure is that our facilities are available for use by all of our patrons, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know that the word unintended necessarily grasps that concept. I agree. And had you, when you explained this, you explained it as, as um, making a mess and making it um, or preventing other people from using the restroom. Why don't we just say that? <laughs> Maybe not mess, but you know something along. Something along those lines. I mean, there's, there's really kind of you know damage, destruction, uh, impairs the ability to use by the patrons of the library. There's a lot of different kind of sure ways to go down. We have many things I think that probably cover our policy in some ways. Alternatively. To that too. Yeah. So I, anyway, I just no, I agree. No. And when you oh, said brainstorming, things, when you, if unintended is really vague and it really helped when you explained it, but we should explain it in the policy. Right. Do you have a suggestion for language? Uh, <laughs> well, we, well, we can put it. Could we take it and, and wordsmith it and yeah. bring it back? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get what you're trying to do. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can switch trying to do that. Yeah. The consequences are maybe not. Sure. I saw like a synonyms for mess. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you want to uh, be able to regulate and destruction conduct that that prevents other prevents other people from using, using facilities. Um, yes, I can pull words get that back because that would be more consistent with. Number two, which is avoids behavior that interferes with others enjoying the life. So, <laughs> no, it sounds good. It's a great suggestion. Um, so, we, you ought to think about something. Oh, my third one says talks about activity that can, that damages or obstructs library property or property of others, and restrooms or library property. So you cover that there. Uh, and then the policy itself says avoid behavior that interferes with the use of enjoyment. So I guess maybe the real question is do we really need a restroom specific policy? Or can it be picked up by the rest of the policy? Right. I think it's because, yeah, but if it's yeah, but if somebody's dealing with the issue, they probably want to see what it says about the rest of it. It's yeah, true. There's enough, there. yeah. There's enough activity there. There's enough activity. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to the other. Yep. Yes. Thank you. We will bring this back next week. Okay. Uh, we'll look forward to that again next month then. And now we'll move on to Lab City. Yeah. So uh, earlier this year, I believe you uh, had a presentation about Lilac City Records, our new uh, local streaming music platform, music streaming platform. Um, and so when we were talking about that, we realized we needed kind of a brand identity for Lilac City Records. But rather than just do one for Lilac City Records, we realized what we're really talking about here is building kind of a sub branch of all things Spokane local. Um, so calling that Lilac City Local as this kind of umbrella sub-brand. Um, and so we reached out to our agency, The Woodshop, to help us develop a new sub-brand around Lilac City Local. And so our mission is to showcase Spokane um, and create the central hub for all things creative, arts, local Spokane. Um, and this umbrella sub-brand will feature Lilac City Records, so two existing, already existing offerings, Lilac City Records and Lilac City Live, um, but they could in, include future endeavors as well, hypothetically, Lilac City Literature, Lilac City Eats, like you could, you know, brainstorm some ideas, but it's kind of this umbrella where we could add more to it. Um, and this Lilac City Local will also include the wiki that Andy Rumsey developed um, as a pandemic, starting as a pandemic project that is a Wikipedia all about Lilac for Spokane artists, musicians, writers, um, a wiki, and that would live on this site as well under this brand. Um, and so this is just really a project about Spokane celebrating itself. And we're the ones kind of being the, as part of our mission of being the platform, um, we're bringing that to life. And we also like to think of it as the people's platform for self-expression. Um, and of course, with all good platforms for self-expression, uh, we needed a logo package. So that's what this is here. Um, and the Woodshop developed this. They call it the Loud Look. They called it the Loud Logo. And the Lilac City Local is the umbrella brand. Um, and then Lilac City Records and Lilac City Live. And the Lilac City Live and Lilac City Records logos are already out there. So if you've been to Lilac City Live, um, I didn't include a picture of that, but we have it on a banner that's on the stage during Lilac City Live. Um, and then the Lilac City record site is actually also live. Um, let me show that to you just real quick. So there it is with the logo in place on the page. This page is live if you wanted to go see it and you can listen to um, some Buffalo Jones music or Odyssey, which both happen to be um, library employee <laughs> bands, but we're actually going to be launching this in the coming weeks and, and putting out a call for artists to start populating or local artists to start populating this website. I like the sound, but I like the way Lilac City Loud sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. 
You could have an alternative by like City Library, right? Yeah, someday we just make this. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I like the way you put it a platform for our community to celebrate itself. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Amanda? Okay, moving on, we have uh, the Director of Performance Review Committee. Um, this was the presentation is just an ask and we can put together a meeting to Any other discussion? <laughs> I think it was a second before you asked that question. 
That's correct. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Regular meeting will be Tuesday, October 18th at the Hilliard Library. Uh, we do not need an executive session this time. So, with that, I will uh, call the meeting adjourned.